I'm Alana Hartman. I work for the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection based in Romney and I'm a Potomac Basin Coordinator. And today I'm visiting Cranberry Glades Botanical Area in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. And Cranberry Glades is a special kind of wetland. It's a high elevation peat bog and you can see that there are some even higher elevation mountains around it protecting it and you'll find a lot of northern type species here. We have noticed how quiet it is here and I highly recommend that you visit and enjoy the solitude here. It's kind of far drive from most places but it's worth it. Once you get here you may hear um, very little engines from airplanes and cars but you will hear birds and the trickle of the water through the wetlands and there's a stream here called the U Creek which winds a lot underneath the boardwalk so you'll see it several times as you walk around this lovely boardwalk. Cranberry Glades is a special area for West Virginia because it houses many rare plant species and mammals and birds as well. You're very likely to hear a warbler which you can then bring your binoculars and identify the birds. We've seen several people here today bird watching and just bringing their families. So what we he have here is Camberus monongolensis. It's a crayfish and it's a blue crayfish, an awesome blue. Blue is very rare in nature, but in this wetland, this crayfish is a primary burrower. It is separated from the main river section, uh, which is where tertiary and secondary burrowers generally can be found, but the primary burrower will dig into uh, the groundwater uh, to the groundwater level in soil and they will have intricate uh, caverns, <laughs> tiny, tiny caverns for themselves. And a very a good indicator of you having a primary burrower uh, like uh, uh, Camberus monongolensis is that you have uh, soil chimneys setting in your area. And here especially, it's where they have dug out and put clods of soil around uh, the top of their hole. And it helps with air movement through their burrow. So you can find them here at Cranberry Glades, or you can sometimes find them in your own backyard. For the heritage of our state, it's an important area because it houses some very rare species that are protected here because it's part of the Monongahela National Forest. And people aren't allowed to get off the boardwalk, so these plants will remain undisturbed. Cranberry Glades is an example of a boreal ecosystem where cotton grass and other plants that like the acidic soil of a sphagnum bog can thrive. They don't have to compete with all the other weeds and fast growing species from further down the slopes. One really special thing about wetlands and especially Cranberry Glades here is the soil. So the soil is constantly saturated here. It makes the plants decay at a different rate. So instead of just rotting like normal leaf fall, it rots very slowly and becomes organic soil. So this really dark soil here is organic soil, not mineral soil. Instead of being the process of rocks weathering down over years and millennia, it's, um, it's the process of plants breaking down over thousands and thousands of years. So this is just from the surface. I found it where an animal had uh, disturbed the moss on top. One characteristic is that it it's holds water differently. Um, so I might be able to... There, the water comes out of it. And, and it's also got more fibric plant material that you might be able to recognize. There's little bits of roots. It just, it behaves differently than mineral soil overall. One of the characteristics of wetland soil and water is that oftentimes, especially in a bog like this, um, the, the water will be acidic and so will the soil. So that also contributes to the slow breakdown. And one of the best things about it is since it's slowly rotting plants, it's a great carbon sink. So, and when I say slow, I mean slow. This soil, for the depth it is, is probably formed over thousands of years because of how long it takes um, peat to form. So this, this is a very special, very old place. This boardwalk is here for the public and I hope you all take advantage of it. As you walk around this boardwalk, you will be going through two different glades or bogs and you will go through uh, several different types of habitats 
that are each unique for different species. There are some alder swamps and there's sphagnum bogs like I mentioned. There are fens, there are old growth high elevation forests that, that beaver have influenced. We saw some open water and some decaying trees that indicate that 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 wasn't always a wet area in that exact spot, so maybe beavers have changed that area. Just a wide diversity of things you can see. I recommend taking at least an hour just walking around all of those different types of areas. For more information about West Virginia's wetlands, please visit our website, dep.wv.gov.